grammar is used in discourse to get things done. When we have a sentence like, I want a tasty cookie, that single sentence typically functions in a larger context. That larger language context is called the discourse. So the discourse in which we find that sentence might be something like, what would you like with your coffee? The response, a tasty cookie, and another response to, okay, is chocolate good, would probably get you a cookie. Professor Gray has already provided some useful concepts about grammar, and they actually get kind of complicated. So I asked specifically for some ideas about how to teach grammar. This is a controversial issue among researchers. Some say that grammar should not be taught explicitly. In other words, rules, meta-language should be not be taught. Others say that it must be taught explicitly. That's the only way that students will really learn. So that's a pretty good controversy in the field. Here's what Professor Gray said. What advice do you have for teachers about teaching grammar? One of the hardest things about teaching grammar is that it sometimes seems really straightforward to teach students how to uh, create a grammatical structure uh, or a grammatical form. For example, I can teach students how to, use, how to form the present perfect aspect of a verb phrase. Uh, and I've done this many times before. And students may be able to then complete some very guided exercises where they take verbs and they put them into the present perfect aspect. Uh, very, and do this with a high degree of ac accuracy. But what becomes harder then is when that student needs to go away and in a less structured context, like in conversation or in writing a paper on their own, um, they ha may have trouble knowing when they should use the present perfect aspect uh, when they're speaking or writing. And this is one of the reasons why it's so important when we teach grammar to pay attention both to form and to use or um, the function of these grammatical structures that we focus on. In particular, grammar teaching can be made much more useful and much more engaging when we teach using a lot of examples and when we explicitly address um, both the form and function of grammatical features. So we need to know not just how to form it, but also when to use it and what types of meanings those grammar uh, structures convey. Uh, when we want to include examples, we want those examples to reflect the language that uh, we expect our learners to be encounter, or to encounter in the real world. So we want them to see examples like the language they're going to hear outside of the classroom or the language structures that they need to produce um, for educational purposes. Now sometimes we use what we call online corpora or very large collections of authentic language to get these very authentic and real language examples. But this isn't always possible in some cases and in some cases it may not even be desirable because often authentic language is very messy and it may be more complex than what our students are ready for. But the key is that these examples uh, should reflect the, the general patterns and they should be similar to authentic language even if they're not real like, examples themselves. Uh, sometimes when we present these examples they are presented in isolation. We ha usually have some degree of context. So verb phrases are presented in the context of sentences and sentences are pre uh, presented in the context of conversations or of text. And this is a very useful tool where we want to see the language structures being used within a broader context. Uh, this, uh, we use grammar within particular contexts to communicate. If we need to convey com complex information, it's because we're in a particular situation. And so when we teach grammar, we also want to keep that situation relevant and we want to teach it uh, related to the context in which we use the grammar.